Hello and welcome everyone to HDM Cast. We weren't here last week because we had nothing to talk about. Now we still have not much to talk about, but hey, we're here and we love you. I mean, we've got a lot of little stuff to talk about. This is also our 13th one, I do believe. Lucky this number 13. Tavol, <laughs> drop. This that is the podcast mushy. of lots of little things to talk about. Also, yeah. I'm Hat. And I'm a Mishy. And yes, that. it is it is indeed episode 13. This means it's the unlucky episode. Right. We're, We're going to get like 50 dislikes. Unlucky for me because it's going to be short, but it's going to be a lot of stuff. So we'll see how it goes. So shall we go ahead News and jump right, feed. into stuff? Okay, so League has been really quiet lately. There's only been a couple of things going on. The one thing I do want to make mention at, and everyone will probably want to give their opinion, is there was a cinematic trailer. Um, oh my goodness. Uploaded on YouTube, I think about a week ago, and it was pretty badass looking. My response can be summed up as I want to play TF and nothing else right now. It was pretty good. That should have been your response beforehand because TF is one of the best characters in League of Legends right now. That's true. Then why don't you play him? Because you're the AP mid. But yeah, the cinematic right, trailer was pretty it. cool. Um, and I loved seeing Wright doing, putting effort into this because these take a long time. I think they said they've been working on this for a year. You know. Those things aren't easy. It's full CGI on a, just, just Riot. Like it's not like a full cinematic team. People just probably working on it in their off time is pretty cool. And the main focus of the cinematic, while nothing actually happened in the cinematic, it was just a lot of champions fighting, it's pretty much that this cinematic is um, more of what's to come. They want a lot more cinematics doing a lot more. Pretty much this was saying, hey guys, we still want to do this. How do you guys feel about this? And we're going to be getting more now. <laughs> the response has been overwhelmingly positive. <laughs> it's been, been pretty good. As impossible as it would be, I would still love a League of Legends series and or movie, you know. I would love to see, have them bring on a lot more people who are specialized and have majored in this to make it speed up the process, and I would love a movie. And they're really big into the lore now, so I could really, if they had the team to do it, I could honestly see them going, you know guys, let's just make a movie. Because League of Legends is getting to that point where it's getting really big, and I'm pretty sure it would do well. But yeah, that's my thought on it. You guys ready to move on to the bundles? Yes. Bundles. Okay, this is probably my most favorite thing in the entire of the universe. League of Legends, right, has introduced their own flexible bundles. And there's three new bundles. They are available until the 10th of June, so only a couple more days. They lasted a week, and I'm sure that they'll keep introducing these. I don't know how frequently they will be. But the main thing that is like the main purpose of this is for anyone who looked at the TPA skin bundle is if you already owned a champion in that, the price was cut down a bit. So it's flexible in that you're not buying this bundle that you have to spend all this money on for champions you already have. It's completely tailored to being able to do to buy only what you need out of it. They also updated the bundles that already existed. Um, the Tibble, ones where you get... Tibble, you can stay in your section and I'll stay in mine. Ouch. You do this to me every time. Okay. You wait your guess. turn. It, you have guys, to wait. Guys, guys, come on. <sighs> okay, so there are three new bundles currently that do end on the 10th of June, as I said. There's the Grab Bag Bundle, which includes Deep Terror Thresh. I Blitzcrank and Astronautilus, plus all three of the champions. And like I said, if you own something, it's going to be cheaper. You're not buying them already. There's also the Commando Bundle for all of the Commando skins, which includes Zin Shao, Lux, Garen, Galio, Jarvan, both the champions and the skin. And lastly, there's the Damsels, Damsels Causing Distress, Distress, I'm sorry, I can't even talk, which includes Ari, Zyra, Lissandra, Syndra, and Diana. So those are really, really cool. I can give an example, like the damsels in the distress one. I already own like all of them except Zyra, and if I got that bundle, Zyra would only be like seven twenty for me. So it's basically a sale. Mine's seven thirty one. I don't. I think I, I think it's just Lissandra that I don't own. So I think that's really cool. Now they also took out the um, gamer choice bundle. I don't exactly remember what was in it. I think it was just a bunch of skins they and champions. It gave a bunch of free RP. Yeah, it, it was just kind of something like all the rest of them. Now, they changed the Champions Bundle and the Digital Collector's Pack. They 
made these flexible as well. So for everyone who wanted the goth Annie skin but already owned a lot of those champions and it wasn't worth it, it's going to be cheaper for you now. A lot cheaper. And a quick note on this, the main reason why I like this is because I like this solution a lot better for people who want to get goth Annie than them putting it on sale in the store like they were trying to do when everyone flipped out. Because my opinion on it was I paid a lot of money to get that skin when I owned a lot of those champions already. And I think there's a better way to go about it. And this is the way, this is the route they should have gone with it. And it's great. They um, also, they I think they changed one of the champions. Instead of it including Sivir now, it includes Nunu. And they took away the free RP that came along with it as well as the runes that were in it. And the price was lowered. Like the overall price, if you don't own any of that, is lower than it was. So that's pretty cool. I'm excited about that. And I'm excited because this paves the road for all bundles that could ever come out. You know, we could even have seasonal bundles like, you know, a Halloween bundle or something. Yeah, they could bundle all the different like holiday skins they make. And they could bring some back. And I'm hoping what I'm hoping since it's only this one's only for a week that each week we'll get a new one. Like we, each week we get a new rotation of champions. I one is really straight up that. called the grab bag pack, and that sounds like something they could do weekly, which is really cool. Well, you realize why it's named that, right? Why? Because it's Nautilus, Thresh, and Blitzcrank all with grabs. Oh, was it a pun? Oh my gosh! Yeah, it was a Riot. pun that you didn't even notice. I love you, Riot. Um. I'm actually not sure if that was intentional, but I, I how can that, that not be totally intentional? intentional? It had to have been. I'm it's no dumb. way that could have not been intentional. I'm just dumb. And then the last thing I want to mention for my section is, as you guys have noticed, Riots try to keep along with the one champion a month, and we have actually not had a champion in a while. Aatrox, Aatrox where? Aatrox should have been out last month, and it is June 7th as of recording this. And we when still he's have, done. Yes. What I want to just say about this was for anyone who's actually paid attention to what's going on I'm 100% certain that the delay for Aatrox is completely due to the fact that they've had a lot of trouble with the EU servers at the moment there's been stuff going crazy even with our servers we've had some problems with the um, the uh, the in-game store thing where you can specialize your items tab that thing that's been disabled ever since it was released almost I had enough time to make me a Morgana one and that's gone not to mention them fiddling with the beta of the new Latin American servers. Yeah. They actually, from what I read, they had to revert the PBE back to what it was, back to the patch that is now, so they could fix everything. And now they just, I think they just recently added Aatrox back in and all, Aatrox, all that, back into it. So they're still doing a little bit of testing on that. I would really be surprised if it was any longer before we got him because they've been working a while on these problems. But that's kind of just what's been going on there. Lots of derp. Pretty much. I can tell you that my IP is like stuck at whatever my RP is, but I know for a fact I still have like 3150-ish. Is it's, that it's, it, on PC I don't know or what's, live? It's live. I don't know what the deal is. but It's funny. And I know personally I've been waiting for the new Morgana skin. And like Hat said, the Latin America servers are currently live now for any people who are of Latin America descent and live over there and want to switch. It's free and you also... From what I read, I can't read Spanish very well, but I was on their Facebook page, and there's a lot of incentives to switch over to it if that's where you belong. Yeah, I heard of these rewards, but they were never, like, listed anywhere. It is on the Facebook page. You just have to be able to get through all the Spanish. It looks like people... I think there's two new servers for two different areas of Latin America, and definitely the Morgana skin, I think, is free. Um, question mark, question mark, question mark. And, yeah. There's a bunch of incentives, including RP and stuff. I know that the one server has a lot of rewards and the other server kind of only has a couple, but like I said, it's all in Spanish. So this is me just assuming it's like recompensos or something. It's, I don't do Spanish. Yeah. So yeah. That's everything new in league this week, pretty much. Right. But since there hasn't really been a lot going on content wise, there's been a lot of forum posts going on. Now, haven't there Tybalt? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I actually had to cut this down quite a bit to um Devil's Forum looking. Devil's Forum looking for this um to actually be done in a reasonable amount of time. The um, reds have been going crazy. Yep. So I pretty much worked this into um I'm gonna talk about characters, I'm gonna talk about skins, and that's pretty much it. Alright, so Aurelia. 
Irelia has been a problem since ever since she came into League. Better nerf Irelia. You know, that's the joke that, you know, they're always nerfing Irelia when they could be nerfing somebody else, like Vladimir. But the problem is, Irelia deserves the nerfs. Because Irelia is in a state where if she is too strong, she's too strong. But if she's too weak, she's too weak. Personally, I really liked Irelia, and it was so hard not being able to play her. Pretty much, uh, they explained that when they made Aurelia and Zin Shao, they didn't know how to make melee fighter characters and how to make them work. Um, so with Aurelia and Zin Shao, they just took everything and put it on the character. They have magic damage, they have physical damage, they have true damage, or, um, well, Aurelia has true damage. They have healing, they have auto attacks, they have spells that do a lot of damage, they have free armor and magic resist, well, Zin Chao has that, Irelia doesn't have that. They have pretty much everything a fighter could possibly want, um, as well as CC. And that just made them too strong because they just have everything. What If you make them balanced, then they're going to be good in every situation. Or if you make them too weak, they're not going to be good at anything because there's nothing they can focus on. And that's pretty much led to Morello giving this ultimatum. It's the Poppy ultimatum, pretty much. Either they never let Aurelia be viable, because if she's viable, she's too strong, or they completely rework Aurelia, and she will not be in any way, shape, or form the Aurelio that we know. Which is kind of sad. Yep. I do hate seeing them have to redo things, but I guess it is, you know, necessary. I do like, like, I played Aurelia a little bit, and she is a pretty cool champion, but it'd be pretty sad to see her change. But if that's what needs to happen to make Irelia playable, then what Irelia I is not allowed to be viable unless she gets a rework. What I see happening is everyone flipping out about it, and then it just being, you know, the only possible solution, and it actually being a lot better than people think it's going to be. Indeed. It's going to be I'm trundle. personally in the camp for give Aurelia a rework because I want to play Aurelia and not feel bad. Well, personally, I think not being viable is not an option. Yeah, there's, you know, you got to do what you got to do. You can't have another Evelyn situation where this champion can never be played ever again. But we have that situation with Poppy, where Poppy players are happy with Poppy not being viable as long as she stays the way she is. And that's not, that's not good. It's okay with Poppy players, and if that's what they want, you can't. They want Poppy to be the joke character, that you character should. that you can carry with when people aren't paying attention. I don't know. That shouldn't be a thing. But, but that's. I understand that, but it is sad for the character because that means that the character can't get the love that it needs and can't develop as a better character because of these blocks. No so, character deserves that. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what I'm trying to get at here. It's not fair to Poppy, whether she's an imaginary character or not, you know what I mean? Indeed. Riot's got this standard that they are trying to uphold with champions. So that's depressing. Um, Sorry, that was probably our fault for making that really depressing. Well, it is depressing. <laughs> yeah, I know, but we didn't have to point that out. <laughs> so yeah, Aurelia is in the state where if people are playing her, they are abusing something on her to make her good or they just play her because they like the play style. They are not playing her because she's a genuinely good character. Um, Sivir. Uh, much lighter news. Sivir. Sivir is getting the next visual rework. Well, that's a bit of a lie. She is currently in the, con the concepting phase where she is a little doodle on Iron Stylus's, uh, what do you call those things, Mishy? The, the, the thing that you draw on where it's the computer. The tablet tablet yes thank you no problem um <laughs> and he's going through lots of concepts on her and then once he's done with the concepting phase it'll go off to whatever the heck it does and she'll be in the pipeline for sure <laughs> okay so what they're aiming for what they've pretty much decided on is that they want Sivir to be battle jasmine jasmine being the princess the disney princess from aladdin what? Yes. They're aiming for a sort of Easternish feel. Um, 
lots of lots of asymmetrical armor where you know she's got like one shoulder pad and one not shoulder pad and all her all her gear is really mismatched looking and um well you said iron stylus is styling her right yeah so she's gonna be in full armor (laughs) (laughs) he made it perfectly clear that while the boob window might not be there they are keeping the midriff you will be able to see all of sivers midriff and she is going to have the most rocking, fantastic abs that you have ever seen since He-Man Pantheon. And that is going to be Sivir's thing, where she has the best abs in the league. Is that a selling point? Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and I'm personally okay with this. I love Eastern-styled armor. Um, if you if you remember Nemesis Jax, that's kind of Eastern-styled. Um, it's more a fin- fantasy-based than... But it's got Eastern roots. Middle Eastern, I mean. Um, this should be interesting. I do want to make the comment. I'm pretty sure, Tibble, you've made this in previous podcasts. But for all those people who are server Vidro upgrade where the problem with the reason why it's been taking so long is that in order for them to redo her, they have to completely redo her. There's a lot yes. that they're changing about it, not just the giving her a pretty update. There's, like, if they make the current Sivir HD, she'll look really nice, but she'll, she'll still, still be, be boring. boring as a wet blanket. So because... they've got to completely redo her backstory. Misha, hey. this is my section. You stay in your section. I'm glad you see you know what it feels like. <laughs> Sivir well, is as boring talk. as a wet blanket, and they need to give her a story and character before they give her the visual update because right now she has no story and she has no character. She is really boring and the only thing keeping her interesting is the fact that she is a fantastic and really good AD carry, but she's such a boring character that no one really sees that. Also pizza delivery. Yes, also pizza delivery server. They they, they kind of has to wait until they get that skin done. My only question is, do you think she's still going to be an AD carry? Yes, they're not changing her playstyle or her kit. They are just updating her story and her character. Well, I'm it's just purely saying, a visual update, not a yes. remake. Okay. I'm just saying if it fit better, I'd prefer them do it. Because Sivir is really good right now to the point that if they buffed her attack range to be on par with Draven and Misfortune, she would be the best AD carry in the game. Really? Yes. Her only drawback is that she has 500 attack range compared to 550 on Draven and Misfortune. Her issue and... isn't her place, like her play kit or anything. It's just she's boring as sin. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, she has no character. She has nothing interesting about her aside from her boomerang blade which by the way will also be getting its own important story um they're going to make her boomerang blade really um like she found it somewhere in the ruins and it's got some ancient story behind it blah 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 um but they'll also explain how she can use it as a spell shield because um it when you whenever you see sivir get that bubble around her that's her that's her using her boomerang blade as a spell shield Mm. so jace uh What did they do to Jace? They're not doing anything to Jace yet, other than the fact that Morello has said, yeah, we're looking into Jace. He's a bit much right now. So look forward to Jace nerfs. We don't know what they are when they're coming or what they're going to be, but there's going to be Jace nerfs. I'm kind of looking forward to that. I'm not saying that Jace is overpowered, but I'm just tired of people feeding Jaces because people feed Jaces. Yeah, and then a they lot can two shot you. <laughs> and a fed J. Oh, hat, you should have been there. It was uh, a couple days ago. Was it in ranked, Mishy? Um, yeah, it was in ranked. It was Katarina against Jace mid, and then Katarina was like, "Oh, we have to win this. Oh, you're gonna play Vega support. Oh, we have to win this." And then she literally fed the um, Jace. Right, and that's why we feeding. lost. He had his um. Last whisper, brutalizer, and Mira mana. At 20 minutes. It was more like 13 or 14 devil. It was 20. He was fed. So anywho, back on track. Uh, Mordekaiser. <laughs> There's not actually much to say about Mordekaiser other than people are, uh, people believe that pretty much all these tangential nerfs, like to Leandries, to certain things, has been indirect nerfs to Mordekaiser and they've made Mordekaiser unplayable. But as it turns out, 
Um, when Riot updated uh, Mordekaiser's recommended items, his win rate went up by 4% across the board worldwide. Just updating the recommended items made Mordekaiser win more worldwide. It's probably because people understood huh. what he was supposed to do a little bit more. I Indeed. still don't understand Mordekaiser. Pretty so. much, Mordekaiser is the guy who farms for 20 minutes and then owns the game. He is he heals smack gobs, he does smack gobs of damage. He is so, so strong. But you just you you gotta understand before you get to that point. I'm just sort of thing where I I'm just gonna let Mordekaiser players do their thing and not really care about the champion. Pretty much, you have to gank the crap out of a Mordekaiser and kill him and dr shut him down early on. Because if that guy gets farmed, he's going to carry the game by himself. Because that is how Mordekaisers work. Sona! So, I wasn't paying attention to a lot of the Sona talk. Um, I still don't know mu half of what they're going to be doing to Sona. Uh, because pretty much Sona gets buffed and nerfed every other week. And I've just stopped paying attention and I just play Sona and enjoy her. But, uh, well, we had another Talon fiasco where, uh, Sona, you know how Sona works, where you, you guys don't know how Sona works. Every three spells that she casts, her next auto attack will deal a bonus. That's Why do you the assume things out of us? I know how Sona Mishy works. Because Mishy doesn't know. Mishy has admitted that she has no idea how Sona works. I will never play Sona because I cannot get the hang of it. Well, don't let me in with the misunderstandings. Well, I'm my Sona's... own person, Tibble. Sona's E, the, uh, no, it's a W. It's the W. You w don't even know how she works. Sona's Sorry, W, when it buffs her auto attack power cord, it reduces the damage that people deal by 20%. Asterisk, it was a talent fiasco to. where where Talon used his E on somebody and it increased his damage, it didn't actually. It said it increased the damage, but it didn't actually deal more damage. And this same problem happened with Sona, where she would apply the damage reduction on somebody, but it wouldn't actually reduce the damage. It The numbers popped up that the damage was being reduced, but the actual damage being dealt was not equal to the numbers being shown. So Riot's so, bad at damage modification, apparently. Yes, very yes. Uh, so Sona has never reduced anyone's damage in the history of Sona, which is a long time. That is, Sona's been in the game for so long. <laughs> um, so the buffs and nerfs that Sona is going to be getting is going to be based around the fact that she, one of her skills was not working. Just like with Talon, where they had to nerf him because they increased his damage by 15%. How do you fix damage reduction, though? The script was working. Um, no. Well. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, they're going to fix it, obviously, but how does that affect the rest of her kit? Um, they're probably going to reduce, like, her defenses and stuff because she can reduce damage, so she's not taking as much damage, blah de blah de blah I haven't really been reading. This is my bad entirely. I am being a flake and not reading through this. Um... And well, I'm sorry, guys. The Sona stuff is a bit ridiculous. Yeah, it's just... I've been completely ignoring this. It's only today that I learned that Dominion Window wasn't working. And uh, I haven't been paying attention to the Sona nonsense at all because I've just been completely ignoring all Sona balance talk because I just want to be able to enjoy Sona. So, uh, Zephyrus, he's not a champion, but he makes champions, and why hasn't he made champions very long? Because he's it's been be talking about them forever. Zephyrus has pretty much resigned from making champions, and he's working on systems and items now, um, almost exclusively. He may make a champion sometime down the line, but it won't be for a very long time, and he's pretty much resigned to just making items and working on the systems behind stuff. Which is good for him. If it's what he enjoys, it's what he enjoys. Um, Zephyrus is famous for such champions as Riven, Renekton, Lulu, Nami, um, Fizz. Uh, <laughs> a, lot of his, a lot of his champions were problem children, to be perfectly honest. 
But uh, yeah, he stopped making champions. And he went on to talk about why we are not getting an attack damage spell vamp item. Um, that stuff was pretty interesting. Yes, yes. Pretty much, uh, Lord Van Damme's Pillager was the practice to see if an AD spell vamp item would work. And Talon would build it. It would be awesome. And Talon would really enjoy it. But then Talon would run into his worst enemies, Darius and Udyr and Lee Sin. Talon has never been able to kill a Darius and Udyr or a Lee Sin. It's just impossible for Talon. But now Talon's got this cool new spell vamp AD item. This should help him kill those guys, right? But... Well, no, because they're building this spell vamp AD item as well, and they're actually getting more use out of it because AD spell vamp items are super fantastic on Darius, Leeson, Udyr, Shivana, and all those brilliant people. Can you imagine, like, Darius, like, spinning to spell vamp? Just... He would get spell vamp off his ult hat. Yes, he would. I would ban him. Uh, gets, does Garen get spell vamp off his E? His judgment? Yes. Even oh. if it crits, it, he gets spell vamp on it. It's crazy. He also gets spell vamp off his ult. Um, so you see so, the problem with spell vamp on AD. Because spell vamp on AD would be tuned for like Talon and Pantheon. These are the guys that it should be for. The AD assassins who need help being survivable. But the people who would use it best would be, you know, Darius, Garen, and all those guys who really don't need a buff right now. Um, so that's why we can't have nice things, because fighters are jerks. But uh, Zephyrus did go on to talk about um, maybe a spell vamp, a, a, a different kind of spell vamp that only triggered on physical damage from... Uh, um, physical spell damage like he said if he had it his way he'd break spell vamp into fizz vamp and magic vamp yes yes um so darius wouldn't be getting super uber heals because he would wouldn't be getting heal off true damage and uh lee sin wouldn't be getting the same because he wouldn't be getting heals off all of his magic damage well lee sin would still be getting super uber heals because lee sin sustain is op and finally for my section uh, skins. Lots of skins. Uh, Hat, you're getting your Zyra skin. What? Uh, Zyra skin is coming out soon, and it is Morello approved. Why, Why are you saying is that for fun? Hat? I don't even have Zyra. Oh, well, you Here. you wanted the Zyra skin. You were talking about, oh, Zyra needs a new skin that isn't Wildfire. It's just, me that wants it. I just well, want it to exist. She, because You're getting a new Zyra skin, and it's Morello approved. So I hope you like Dark and Evil. I do. A lot. Perfect. I personally like Wildfire, so... I like it. I just think that there could be more. I don't know. I think they did. They could have done Zyra better. So that's just... That's just my thing. But we don't care about my Zyra opinion. Yes, we do. Well, what's next? Well, um, Morella went on to say that all the champions between Zyra and Zack, those guys who got one skin on release and haven't gotten another skin yet, they're going to rearrange the pipeline to try and get those guys some more skins sooner. Sweet. They're falling a bit behind on that. Yeah, and I'm really waiting for the Kha'Zix one, because I just want to see what they're going to have for Kha'Zix. Yeah, After I have no Mecha Kha'Zix, I mean. And finally, the ultimate skin, which we don't know what it is yet. I think it's Dragon Master Swain, but we honestly have no idea what it is yet. It's Dragon Master Swain. They're not but willing, the next ultimate skin. They're not willing to tell us because they just want to make that, hey, there's going to be the skin coming out, surprise. but we're not going to tell you what it is. They want it's the Dragon anticip- Master Swain. They it's want not the going to be Dragon Master Swain and stop getting my hopes up. They want the it's anticipation be to be built up. Tyrant it's Swain came Swain. out too soon ago that they're not going to do Dragon Master Swain. It's not Dragon Master Swain. necessarily. I swear. I will punch through this mic. <laughs> if they're willing to do. Cho'Gath has two legendary skins, so. Yes. Believe me, I want it to be. I just don't want Tibble to get my hopes up. Yeah. It's I know. Dragon Master Swain. And no offense, Hat, I'm hoping for something from me. <laughs> so, in actual news and stuff that we can actually say for sure. Uh, You know how PFE, Pulse Fire Ezreal, came out at like half price um, when it first came out? And it was half price for a week, and then it went up to the ridiculous 3200 price? Yes. 
They're doing that th for the next ultimate skin and presumably all ultimate skins. So you can buy ultimate skins for cheaper on the first couple of days. They and are then rewarding. They are rewarding the people that are active at the time of release of that skin. Yes. So I don't think it will. Uh, uh, PFE was like sixteen hundred. I believe the next ultimate skin will be eighteen hundred to nineteen hundred on release. So not as cheap, but still cheap. And they're going to be doing this for every ultimate skin, so I have absolutely nothing to complain about. I am pretty excited. I really am hoping it's something for me. I know it probably won't be. It probably will be the Swain thing, but not to get Hat's hopes up. But whenever thing cool things happen, it's for Hat because we get the best magic cards for Hat. <laughs> so it's not I'm just my fault. I'm just used to not trading being... in one of my favorite mythics, and I got a mythic in return. You know what mythic that was? Lizarre. One for hat. Love the mirror mastermind. So yeah. I have two Ugh. of them now, and it's Tibble's fault. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. What's the are you uh, done with your forum stuff? Or? Yeah, that's the that's the end of my section. So if I like trains and I like rails, then I'm gonna watch a different YouTube show. Derailed. So, uh, a lot of minute things have been happening in the internet. Lots of announcements and stuff. Uh, I guess the first thing we'll talk about, though, is not something I'm probably the best to talk for. It is something called Games for Good. Yeah, that's going to be something to and I are going to do what we can to explain it. For any of you who don't know, does anyone know who James Portnow is? He is a... Is he the writer of Extra Credits? I believe yes, he so. Is the writer for Extra Credits. He is he... also a professor at DigiPen, which is a video game school college up in Washington, the state, not D.C. Um, and he's a really cool guy. So as well as being a professional gaming consultant, um, gaming companies can call him up to get like some genuinely good gaming advice and advice on how to make games for a price. That's how cool he is. He's working on this project called Games for Good, and what his main goal is, is to change the conversation around games. What it, He's tired of people saying, well, games cause violence and games cause this, and when people go to defend it, there's not much to say about games that are good. So he's meeting with a whole bunch of big people on D.C., Washington, D.C., and other places, and traveling all over the place to explain why games are good, and what they can accomplish, and if people realize what they can accomplish, what they can really accomplish. Because people don't really look at games as a form of getting things done. It's more of just a, well, let's go shoot people and Call of Duty. And people don't realize how much potential games have in like learning environments as well as just regular environments and playing video games. The big thing how is, is opening it. up dialogue. Pretty how much. How he put it and how it's best put is changing the conversation from why games are not bad to why games are good. And what, well, what they can do. And so, he is taking a year off meeting with all these people. He's raising, his goal is 50,000. He is currently at 18,384 with 87 days left. And I just want to say that this pretty much, this just happened. This is brand new and he's almost halfway there. He's also got stretch goals for like seventy five and a hundred thousand. He does. The seventy five thousand is he's gonna hire a PR firm and it to have someone promote the idea. Eighty five thousand is a forty hour twitch TV stream, um, with a bunch of games and a bunch of um, designers and people coming in and talking about things. And then for the hundred thousand and hundred thirty thousand, he has not set anything yet. But I look I, I'm assuming that if he gets closer to that, he's gonna start doing stuff. And on top of all this, he's still doing his extra credit duties. Yep. And he's also got a bunch of mini goals. Well, not mini goals, but mini um, rewards for what people do. Some of them are like, hey, we'll have dinner together. We'll get a bunch of people together and have dinner. Or if you donate a lot, he'll be on your podcast or stuff. Or if you donate super, super ton, you can actually have a um, dinner for him, a private dinner with him. And the top one at 5,000 is he will actually fly out to you and crash with you and play games or talk to you about stuff or do whatever you want him to do. So there's a lot of really cool incentives to help be a part of this. And even if you can't, I mean, donate a dollar, you know, or you donate $5, just donate a little bit. Or what you can do best for this if you can't donate is tell other people or tell people you out. have, yeah, tell people you have connections with, you know, 
say you're not, you can't do something, but you're part of a company that could donate a lot or support a lot, you know, get other people involved. The more people that are involved, the better this will go. And this would help the gaming industry be something amazing. This is something the game industry needs. And I absolutely love that he's doing this. So yeah, if that's happening, go support that. Links in the description and all that. Yep. Um, I wish I was cool enough that people would pay $1,000 for me to go play games with them. Yeah, I know, right? James seems like a really cool guy. And he is. If you are if you don't know what Extra Credits is, Mishy put a link in the description. Do. Go watch it. It is some of the best, just best of well, gaming. Well, quick, why don't you explain what it is? Summarize it. Um, You've got three people well now it's four people who really love games one is um is his name dan yes uh, daniel he works at pixar disney pixar and then you've got james port now who is a gaming professor at digipen as well as being the gaming consultant allison and got is their professional artists. artist well allison doesn't work for them anymore oh no yeah How they, come? they she quit why because she ha- wants to go on and do other stuff fine and they've got two new artists. Um, and they do a weekly show where they just talk about gaming theory. And I don't even know how to explain it. It's gaming theory and questions. How the people game industry a- works. People, uh, questions people ask them. You can ask them questions and they'll sometimes get a full episode out of a, top, a good topic. And they do certain other things like games you might not have played is a nice series where they show off all these rare games that deserve attention but probably never got it. Stuff like that. Just all the good of gaming in one show. Indeed. Done by some incredibly smart people who know exactly what they're talking they about. They are very, very intelligent people. And they cover really good topics. I think I actually did an essay and used some of them, some of their things as references. They're cool people. They're over at Penny Arcade, and they represent what gaming can be when gaming is taken very seriously. The good kind of very seriously. All of them are very big on promoting games, so it's no surprise that James Port now is taking on this responsibility. But yes, go support them. And the rest of what I have to talk about is a lot of like, just announcements and stuff. The first thing I guess we want to talk about is um, Humble Bundle Eight is still a thing as of when you should be hearing this, maybe a couple more days. One of the, they continue to outdo themselves in the bundles. Uh, eight different games so far, including Awesome Knots, an exclusive skin for that. Thomas was alone, which is fantastic. Uh, the beat the bun, the beat the price stuff includes like Hotline Miami and um, uh, what's it called, Intrusion Two. It's a good bundle. And they also have their their new weekly bundle came out, and it's like it looks like every serious Sam game ever. I uh, I don't know that series well, but I'm sure a lot of people that's a cool thing for them. Uh, so yes, yeah, a bunch of soundtracks. Eight. Oh yeah, the soundtracks. Awesome, not soundtrack is fantastic. As is Thomas with Alone. We actually did buy a couple of um of this, so yeah. It's highly worth your money. And plus it goes to a good cause for people who don't know what the Humble Bundle is. You can donate to the companies that produce the game, the Humble Bundle, as well as charity. You can adjust that how you wish. Yeah, so it's a really good program. It's worth a look. I'll see if I if I remember to put a description, the link in the description. It's HumbleBundle.com. It's not hard to find. Yeah. Um, as for news, Curiosity finished. For those who don't know what Curiosity it was, and it was an app, I think just iOS, might have been Android, and it was this gigantic cube made of layers of smaller cubes. And it had thousands upon thousands of people tapping away at this cube trying to figure out what Peter Molyneux was doing and was hiding at the center of it. And it finally finished, and the last cube was tapped, and the prize for the last person who tapped, uh, I cannot remember his name at this moment, was a role of a god in this new game upcoming called Goddess, which is being developed by Peter Molyneux. Uh, it's supposedly the spiritual successor to one of his other god games, and 
Um, we haven't heard many details about what this prize entails, but the big thing is, is you get to make certain decisions within the game, and they will do their best to implement them. And the bigger one is, you get a portion of the revenue this game makes. Anytime this game makes money, you get a small piece of that. And that's pretty big. Huh. Um, the interesting thing about this, though, is apparently this role is not permanent. Uh, there will be a way to overthrow the god and instate a new one at some point. I don't know what this means for the first person, or if, if the money thing, I don't know, but... It's something. Sounds pretty cool. I've never. I don't know what, like, what kind of game it is. I'm not. It's not something I'm really into. But it's a big deal, I guess, especially for the person who won. But yeah. Um, Terraria updates. Uh, there's a couple b bits of news going on about this. Apparently, an iOS and Android port is somewhere in the makings of development, which is really cool. Being able to play Terraria like not on a like, just as you out and go. It seems like a neat idea. But a bigger news is, um, apparently there is going to be a 1.2 patch. And it's like a full-blown patch as 1.1 was. It's got, like, weapons and enemies and, like, customization things, like furniture and whatnot for your house. And it looks like a full-blown... New bosses? Uh, new bosses? New bosses. There's new, vo new mobs and variations of the old ones. Um, hard mode changes, PvP tweaks. I don't know about new bosses, but presumably there might be one. Oh. Yeah, non-mechanical bosses with unique AI and stuff. So yes, it, it's a full-blown update. And apparently it, a good chunk of this is likely to be put onto the console version as well as DLC. If not all of it. So, yeah. Um, I don't know if there's like a release date. Of, no, no release date yet. Uh, it seems like they hope to have it available by July, but there's no guarantee. So yeah, Terraria updates. That's pretty sweet. Uh, um, Minecraft has been continuously updating as the 1.6 patch is near in the future. There hasn't been much as of the last podcast. Um, the horses, they got UIs so that when you open your inventory while riding a horse, you can take on and off the horse armor and the saddles. Hmm. So that's kind of nice. So you can actually uh, like to get your saddles and your armor back. And I presumably that fixes the issue where armored horses couldn't breed, I guess. Because dirt. Wouldn't want that. And more interesting update is horses make noise now. They have the standard and horse noises you, you would think. The neighing and the galloping and stuff. But also the villagers have noises now. They do stuff? Oh no. They make noises. <laughs> and they all sound like sarcastic hmm. That's funny. They all, they all sound like that. It's just like the hmm. It, it's very amusing if you can find a way to listen to that. Uh, other than that, nothing but, but lots of bug fixes, which is cool. There was a rather annoying bug where if you had your... Whenever the game tried to play music, either the background music or a record, it would, like, corrupt the sound and you had to restart to get the sound back. That sucks. <laughs> Stuff like that. They're, they're working on that before 1.6 comes out, thankfully. Uh, also in Mojang News, Scrolls finally went into beta, so you can now purchase it. I have not seen anything on the game yet, but I'm looking to do that soon. How much is it? Uh, I couldn't find out about logging in, and I was too lazy to. I presume it's probably about... we the worst YouTubers. I presume it's probably about $20, whatever Minecraft was when it was in beta. Um, Scrolls is like a card game, for those who don't know. It's, I think it drew a lot of inspiration on like magic and... I guess other well-known strategy games of that sort. Uh, I'm, I want to know more about it. I just haven't had the chance to look for things about it. I'm trying to see if I can find the price on it real quick. Loading store. Anyways, um, interesting things going on. Mirror's Edge 2 was rumored to be a thing. Apparently it was found on the listing of 
think it was the Xbox site or maybe um, the Xbox market. It was promptly removed, but hey, Mirror's Edge 2 would be a great thing if it was to happen. Uh, if they did it right. A lot yeah. of people... That's the big thing, but Mirror's Edge 2 is a brilliant game. It just... It had issues. It's very hard to describe what those issues are, too. Um, a lot of people wanted more of that, though. It's a really neat idea, so if it's implemented well enough, it could be something cool. Um, I think the major problem was that it focused a little too much on combat, and it wasn't very good combat, where it should have been focused more on the uh, on the awesome epic free running. Yeah, the combat was pretty jerp in that game. Uh, so maybe they'll focus more on the free running and the cool stuff like that. Uh, DuckTales Remastered. I guess it wasn't confirmed as of the last time I talked about this game, but it is getting a PC version. It looks like it's going to be on like every system ever, too, so that's really cool. Uh, because they know it's going to make piles of money. Oh my gosh. Uh, this game looks so good. There's apparently two trailers out, one for the Transyl Transylvania level, and I forget what the other one is, but yeah, more trailers of this game, actual gameplay. I came to the conclusion that the original trailer they posted was probably one of the best game trailers ever made. It had the humor, it had the, the freaking theme song, and it was like nothing but gameplay. Uh, Do we so, have an so, idea of when this is going to be out? Uh, I think this summer. It That'd be, be cool. Soon. We should do videos Stop asking on it. me for a quote, Tim Schafer. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm getting this game like immediately. <laughs> We should definitely do something on it then. I'd love to. I think it's going to be fifteen dollars, which is a pretty fair price for this thing. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, release date? I think it's in July, maybe. Cool. It's going to be sometime this summer, hopefully. Uh, I don't know. If that, uh, I just like... wanted an estimate. I just wanted to know if this was oh yeah five years type thing because that's what everything's been lately. No, it should be this year. I'm pretty sure. Cool. Uh. Scrolls refuses to load the store, so I'm sorry I can't get a price on that. That's I fine. assume it's I assume it's about twenty dollars. Uh, Fable Anniversary HD is coming. That's good news, right? People love Fable One; it's like the only good one. So, series went downhill from there. Bad news is it seems like it's only going to be on 360. Of course. Uh, which means I won't get to play it unless you bring your 360 over hat. I'll drag it over just to play Fable if they do it right. I'm hoping if they do it right. <laughs> if this is just today. a prettier version of Fable, no one buy it. Yeah. Because Fable was shit. It was a pile of shit. I don't care about your nostalgia. Fable sucked. It was okay, but it sucked. There was so much shit wrong with that game. And this is the chance for them to go back and fulfill all those promises they made about this damn game. So if they just if this is just a fresh coat of paint, no, I am not going to be impressed. Also, they bet. I'm I'm very wary about what they price this at. It, I'm hoping for not a full price release for an HD remake. If they go back and do all the promises that they promised for the original Fable One and fix all the dumb shit that the game had, full price release, I'm okay with that. Sixty dollars. But if it's just a fresh coat of paint, anything more than thirty dollars is gonna get ugh, from me because. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. That game is nothing more than nostalgia right now because there are so many things wrong with it. Uh, other interesting series news. Deus Ex The Fall is something that's being worked on. Uh, bad news is it is being designed for mobile. Uh, why is everything mobile? Because mobile is the new thing now and it's what's making money. And this, I'm not, I, I'm not an old PC gamer, so I can't feel the full sting this must be for Deus Ex fans. Deus Ex have had to put up a lot of stuff. They only just recently got Human Revolution, and even that had its problems. Uh, it was a pretty good game, I've heard, but like the boss, the forced boss fights and stuff left kind of a bitter taste. But at least it was a good game. Uh, and it was out for the right systems. This is, this sounds like it's going to be a canonical game, so if you want to know the lore and stuff, you're going to have to play this game. And I Because think, Deus Ex is huge on the story. 
And I Oh my gosh. But apparently it's going to be like iOS only. Maybe Android, I don't know. The more amusing side of the story though is that I never asked for this meme got a huge resurgence of popularity because it literally fits this thing. Do you know about that meme? Yes, it's like the most set it's like the main character in Human Revolution just keeps saying that over and over. I did not ask for this. I never asked. And it became for this. a meme. So you got the new and meme of him holding the the iPad is with that tip that typical him bare shirted with smoking, looking very sullen, it's like I never asked for this. <laughs> so that's pretty funny. But it's still pretty sad for Deus Ex fans. Um more dumb mobile stuff, sort of. Uh, hey, there's a new Halo game. I don't know what its name is. I forgot. Because I really don't care, honestly. It is being developed for Windows 8 and Windows 8 phone mobile bullshit. So uh, wait, we wouldn't be able to play it on our computers because we don't have Windows 8? It sounds like it's exclusively for Windows 8. It's not even going to be on console. Huh. Microsoft does not know how to do things. I don't know what they're doing. They they make this terrible console. They don't even want to sell for the consoles and stuff. And they decide to use the stupid Windows 8, which nobody likes. Nobody likes Windows 8. It is acceptable for mobile tablets and stuff, but nobody It's wants not to as it bad as Vista, but compared to Windows 7 that did pretty much everything right. Uh Apparently the game is like a twin stick shooter though, so it's not going to be like a big numbered title, but still, it's kind of dumb. Uh, and I don't really care either way, because I've sort of fallen out of Halo since playing uh, Reach, which was a good game, but I just sort of fell out of the series after that. But yeah, I'm never going to get Windows 8, so stop trying Microsoft. I'm gonna, I'm content with 7 forever. Yeah, me too. I... Uh, well, I think for Windows 8, you can get it and just make it look like Windows 7? Question mark. You can, but you still... I don't know. Ugh. But where's the start menu? It, it's just... It's not worth it. It's a bad system. It's fine for, like, tablets and touchscreen stuff, but not for a legit computer. And I've heard nothing but shit about the Windows 8 phone. Uh, it, it sounds like a terrible piece of technology, which is obnoxious, and a freaking Bing button, because everybody loves Bing. I hate Bing. Speaking of Bing bar, I'm gonna uninstall that. <laughs> I've got I've got Riva open, and I just glanced over. And the last bits of news I have is Smash Brothers will be making some sort of appearance at E3. So we might finally get Smash Brothers for Wii U, and Wii U will have a reason to exist. Yep. And, and hopefully they'll do right by Super Smash Brothers this time, because uh, Brawl was not what it should have been. Brawl could have been one of the best games in history and one of the most played games at MLG, but they chose not to support it. And that really hurt the game that could have lasted for 10 years. Well, the game has lasted for 10 years. People still love Brawl. The problem is they don't support the 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 esports aspect it could be. They literally well, it could be an amazing esport. They don't want it to be though. Is the problem is they literally introduce mechanics such as tripping to dissuade people from wanting to play the damn game as esports. I don't know what the problem is, but. They have a serious fear of fame and money. Nintendo they just seems don't to have issues want with us that, to give they? them money. <laughs> Nintendo has issues with being popular and wanting money. I don't know what their issues with that. Last bits of news I have is uh, Snake's new voice. They, I guess they had to let David Hayter go, which is kind of sad because he's basically been Snake for all these years. Um, apparently they were looking for a more older, subtler snake or something like that. So they casted Kief Kiefer Sutherland as the new snake. I don't know who this guy is, but apparently he was sort of a big deal on the show 24. So I guess he's well known for something. I just never watched the show. I haven't heard his voice or what they plan on doing with this, but it's interesting seeing people talk about it on the internet. You have the people like, uh, I guess this is sort of cool. He seems like a cool guy. But then you have like, no, David Hayter, why change? <laughs> so. 
Uh, we'll see how that turns up. And that's basically all I have for this week. Lots of bits of news and interesting things coming up. And next week, I think, we should have a lot more to talk about because E3 is going to happen soon. I'm pretty sure it's this week. Prepare your editing software, Michelle. Yeah, right? <laughs> it's going to be a long thing because we'll probably have Aatrox to talk about, too. So. It should be actually more interesting now. Um, you have the games being talked about. Microsoft specifically promised to bring up all sorts of games for the expo. So maybe that'll recover some sort of uh, goodwill towards the Xbox. Still not going to get one, sorry. But looking forward to all the games. And that's it. Do we have anything else to talk about? I think that's it. My cat is still cute in case anyone cares. We don't. They do. Okay, my cat is so cute. Ignore This Tibble. has been HDM Cast 13. I'm Ty. I'm a Mishy. I'm Hat. And thanks for joining us. You all us. have a wonderful week. We'll see you next week. Good day.